So I'm really pleased to introduce uh, Jessica Loria uh, from Chobani. She's the Senior Director of Brand and Communication for Chobani, which I'm sure you're all very familiar with. I hope that you've consumed in the last 24 hours. If you haven't, you have an obligation to consume Chobani in the next 24 hours. Um, so please join me in welcoming Jessica to the stage. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So there are two reasons that I titled this presentation what I did. One is for pure shock and awe, because that's my style. And the second is because WTF means what the hell is this? I'm reading about it. I'm seeing it. But I sure as hell do not feel comfortable talking about it. And that's why we're all here at a conference like this. And I want you all to feel extremely comfortable that you should not know what Snapchat's about because it is for young people. And that's OK that you don't know. And what we're finding is that young people are actually the ones that are introducing it to what Snapchat's all about. And to be completely honest, the only reason I'm on Snapchat, that I use Snapchat, and that Chobani is on Snapchat is because of my very, very millennial team. In fact, I have someone here snapping uh, my <laughs> speech right now. So, and we're seeing again that oh, this doesn't go very fast, does it? So this is my very millennial team. And we're finding that we are being taught about Snapchat through these young people. And they are the voice. They are the generation of Snapchat. And they're the ones that are teaching us using, that to use it. And we're finding that um, people are using it to communicate with their younger siblings and younger relatives. So what does it mean for the rest of us? It feels like the world is saying, you have to be on Snapchat. Everybody's doing it. It's what all the cool kids are doing. But for you as marketers, you want to know, is Snapchat going to be what I should invest in? Or is Peach the next big thing? And if you don't know what Peach is, I'll be here in 2017 giving WTF Peach. Um, but I think it's safe to say that Snapchat's sticking around. So let's just look at some of the facts. Six in 10 people out of the ages of 13 to 35 are on Snapchat. 100 million daily active users. Now, the word daily is really important here. They're not just on it and using it once every six months. They are using it every single day. 400 million snaps per day. 6 billion, with a B, billion video views per day. Now, to give you perspective of what that means, Facebook has 8 billion video views a day. Facebook has been around a hell of a lot longer and has everybody and their mother, literally. And that's a really small gap. And people are taking notice and having a conversation about it. But Facebook are not the only ones that should be scared. TV viewing habits for 18 to 34-year-olds are going down. And there's proof of this that we saw from the VMAs this year. 12 million views on Snapchat and 9.9 .9 million views on TV. So it is here to stay. It's changing. So we want to know, what does, that, what does that mean for us? So I think let's take a step back and look at the overall social landscape so we can see how Snapchat fits in. So really quick overview, I'm sure all of you know, but to understand what each of those platforms mean for consumers and why consumers are on it and why brands are on these platforms. So Facebook, it's all about consumers saying, hey, I did it. I ran a marathon. I had a baby. For brands, just unmatched targeting capabilities that they've got on Facebook. Uh, Twitter, all about keeping up with it. How else are we going to know what's happening with Donald Trump and Kanye West? News, events, entertainment. And for brands, you have an opportunity to do some relevant listening here. Uh, Instagram, all about that curated moment. And for brands, you can get into those lifestyle moments, whether it's food, whether it's fashion, travel. Pinterest, people, people dreaming about whatever they're inspiring, kind of their ultimate goals. And again, for a brand, it's that interest targeting, whether people are getting married, having a baby. And YouTube, consumers are coming to YouTube for that entertainment value. They want to be entertained. And for brands, it's about the eyeballs and the viewing. So, so understanding all of this, I am going to give you my interpretation of Snapchat. If you took YouTube and the entertainment value and the eyeballs that it provides, and you get it together with Facebook, and for Facebook, we mean this is your world that you live in. I got to push this hard. 
your friends and family. So these guys, imagine they get together and they have a love child. And then they have this love child and then they tweet it out to the world and this is what Snapchat is. So the main takeaway here is to say there's a little bit from each of the other platforms and different reasons why people are on it, why you want to do it, but this is a very simplistic view. So let's look at what are the things that really make Snapchat interesting and unique. It provides a really unique perspective for the viewer. There's something really intimate about it, and it makes you feel like you're really part of something. It's very raw, real, and now, which again, we've, we've kind of run the full spectrum. It's kind of what social used to be, and now it's much more curated and polished, and we're kind of finding uh, people are kind of back into that purely socialness of this. It's, there's something just so raw and real. You can't, you, can't, you can't plan it or schedule it. You have to do it right then and there. And it's for a limited time, one second or 24 hours, and that's it. Uh, amazing customization and personalization skills. And again, it's very raw. It's just like a drawing with your finger. It's nothing too crazy, but we know that millennials love this, and this is so important to that generation. And last but not least, it is fun. It is not your mother's Facebook. And you can do it to all. You can share it with all your friends or to one and have a really intimate moment with someone. Okay, so that's a Snapchat overview. So what the hell are you guys going to do with it, right? You're like, great, as a marketer, I've got money to spend. Do I spend here? Do I do this? Do I invest? What do I do? So as a brand, there's two things that you can do on Snapchat. There's organic and there's paid. So I'm just going to talk a bit about both and give some examples. So organic, as a brand, you're doing it for pure surprise and delight. I think Andy touched on it great. You know, you're, you're entertaining people. That's what you, you're going to do here. You can uh, provide some relevancy. You can talk about some fun things that are happening. And there's definitely a cool factor. As a brand, if you're connecting with the consumer on a platform that they love and they're into, that's great. They're going to appreciate that. But you also have to make sure your content is good and not shitty. And then paid. Why would you want to even be on Snapchat for paid? Well, it's eyeballs, right? You're really getting a lot of views. We saw 6 billion video views a day. So there are a ton of eyeballs on this channel. Relevancy, you can lean into a lot of different things. And then geo-targeting, you know, depending what you're doing as a brand, could be really interesting. So who is doing really great stuff organically? Taco Bell. Super, super fun. Leaning into all the different features of the platform. They're having fun with it. They're leaning into the restaurants. They're leaning into the food. They're just providing really fun uh, branded content, which Andy, now I'm going to think every time I hear say branded content. But they're just providing fun entertainment, right, for, for consumers. And if I were sitting in your seats, I'd go, yeah, great. Taco Bell's a millennial brand. Of course they know how to create millennial content. What if we're an adult brand? What if we create something like Greek yogurt or something more adult? Doesn't get any more adult than museums. Los Angeles Contemporary Museum of Art, they have done an amazing job of taking highbrow content wrapping it in interesting cultural, what, cultural you know, songs, phrases, and everything that's going on, and making it relevant to millennials. Um, again, these are a lot of young people phrases. Some people on my team have to tell me what some of these things mean. Uh, but just a really great job. And again, I, I don't think that we should let who we are as a brand stop us from trying to make something relevant to this generation. So. Uh, of course, have to give a shout out to GE for doing a really great job. I'd like to think of them as the Nike of content creation, as we just saw. They're doing amazing stuff, and they're taking things that are not considered even consumer-facing content or even interesting. It's science, but they are doing it in such a fun, entertaining way that, you know, that it has to be acknowledged. So they do a really great job. So what do we do at Chobani, right? We're, we're Greek yogurt. It's not the most interesting thing in the world, so what can we do? We launched last January, and this was our launch post, and we did it to reveal our limited batch flavors. So every season we have two flavors that are, you know, lean into the season. So we did it last year, we did it again this year. I'm going to show a little video for our peppermint perfection flip. So I'm going to play this now. There's no audio. So just fun, felt like stop motion. Each was an individual image. Nothing crazy, uh, but people really love it. They felt like they got a sneak peek. 
We showed them before we talked to PR, before it was on the shelves, and just fun. The other thing that we lean into is our culinary efforts. So we talk about made with Chobani. We inspire people with different recipes. You can never go wrong with food porn. And lean into some relevancy things uh, with, with our food. So like when it was National Peanut Butter Day. When we do live events, we bring our consumers in and, and give them a sneak peek. So this was, uh, we do Aspen Food and Wine and Chicago Food and Wine. And again, just doing videos and stills of the food that we're producing, if we have chefs. And we do this behind the scenes as well when we do our, our video productions. So again, we had Steph, Chef, and e. Izard, just giving people that sneak peek. Uh, we did a partnership with BuzzFeed, and while we were creating the content, we were also creating snap stories around it. And it's just about giving consumers a little bit more than that one piece of content that you're creating. All right, so what about the money? There are different types of paid options, so just for you guys to understand, and the other thing with Snapchat is it's changing constantly. Animated uh, lenses, which I'll talk about in a second, just became available to start branding. It's constantly changing. So the things you can do, you can own a story in a live event, like Burberry Fashion Show. An animated uh, a lens, which is an animated selfie, you probably have seen all over the internet people vomiting rainbows. That's what this is. You can own a filter, nationally or locally. And then there's two types of video. You can own video in a live story, which is something that's happening live, or you can have 10 seconds in Discover, which is partnering with a publishing platform. So we saw Dunkin' Donuts did this uh, in the fall, celebrating their, their pumpkin spice. They did a filter nationally, and they also did it locally tied to the restaurants. McDonald's does the same thing. This is someone on my team. We, we were doing a, a road trip uh, <laughs> when we were doing Aspen Food and Wine. When we, we went to McDonald's having a YOLO moment and realized they were the fe features of Snapchat, so of course we had to do a Snap story. And then we're also seeing entertainment, uh, a lot of movie trailers, video playing in this 10 second piece. So I'm gonna share with you guys what happened when we, Chobani, did an ad buy with Snapchat. So we're a partner of IMG College, and that means that we work with 22 different colleges and universities um, where we have our product there, and then we also do uh, create some content. And we decided that we were going to do a buy with Snapchat and own the live, the game day live. So this meant that on every football game day, they had this uh, live story that would live in here, and it would say college game day live. And we were gonna have a 10 second story live within this, and how it works is that users, uh, they submit their own content, they submit their content, and then Snapchat decides what's gonna be in this story. So two things I wanna note is, one is Snapchat told us to make it look like an ad. And this actually goes against our own content philosophies and strategies, but we said, okay, they must know what they're talking about. They were adamant that it looked different than the user-generated content that would be in there. So. The other thing they told us, which, excuse me, they did not tell us, is that they changed the plan last minute. So it was supposed to be one big national, one big national buy. They changed it to be local games. So it was Michigan versus Michigan, Texas A&M versus Alabama. So we made an ad, and they told us, uh, again, make it look like an ad, and so one of the struggles we always have is, okay, well, football and yogurt, how do you make that work? It's not the best tailgating product to have. So we said, all right, well, we'll, t we'll focus on the athlete and we'll focus on kind of that pregame moment and, and pre preparing. So we'll show this ad. So yeah, naturally powering the athlete in all of us. 1.7 million views is what they projected and we got 4 million views. Really, the, the, you're getting the eyeballs here but the completion rate was not good. It was less than 7%. And even though they don't have metrics, they, you know, the, to benchmarks to compare against, they said, well, it should be around 15 or 20. So we got together with them and we said, all right, well, let's try another video. And this time, let us do what we feel more comfortable with. Doing something a bit, ooh, I'm sorry, before I get into what that is. The completion rate's actually the norm to have a low completion rate. It's pretty standard. So 
this is something that Digiday did. I'm sure that uh, Snapchat doesn't love this, but it's showing that, look, after two seconds, it's dropping. So holy shit, why are we buying ads on Snapchat? But, um, but again, things are evolving every day. I'm sure even now that these metrics have probably changed. So anyway, we said, all right, well, let's, let's get together with Snapchat and let's, let's create something that we feel more comfortable with, something that's a bit more organic and if it feels like what we do on the channel. So again, we leaned into the culinary platform and, and making food with Chobani. So this is, the, this is what we uh, revised and put up. We'll play this. A bit more in line with our, our organic efforts. Uh, it was better, but it still had low completion rates. And uh, they gave us another make good to have a filter that we used in 22, excuse me, in 12 colleges. And we just said, okay, well, we'll make a filter and we'll give it to you and we'll put it in the colleges. And Basic and Proud was an effort that we were doing for our pumpkin spice limited batch. Uh, and this was good. Again, we, we were happy with it. We'll take it. 12 colleges, 400,000 views, 20,000 uses. You know, we're not going to complain. Uh, but we definitely had some learnings to take away. And again, this is, this is just for us and our experience. But you know, that video content really has to resonate with the platform. And in thinking about it, that, that live event story, people are just, they're just going through user-generated content. They are just going boom, 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 boom. So, so maybe interrupting that might not have been the best thing, particularly uh, for game day and the content that we had didn't really seem to work. And, and if we think about what that Discover platform is, and Discover's working with that publisher where people are kind of in more of a mindset to be engaging with content, so maybe that could be a better place to have, um, to have a video. The other thing is on the, on the filters, you really need to make it feel part of that snapper's moment. But you have to remember, it's costly, it only lasts a limited time, and you have to make sure it's a brand fit. When is it okay to put your logo on somebody's face? So again, the, all of this too, you know, they're still figuring out their metrics, and what you need to figure out is what are you gonna, if, what is the value, is this worth the investment compared to the data that you need or maybe you don't need? And yesterday we had some talks, is this in the 10, the, you know, 70, 20, 10, is this in that 10 that you guys try and see what it's like? But, you know, it can be costly. So a few key things to remember as we wrap this up is one is it, start organic. You have absolutely nothing to lose and figure out what your voice is on the brand. You know, it, it disappears in 24 hours, so experiment. I'm sure your legal teams will hate you for this, but it's gone in 24 hours, I'll have no proof. So, you know. <laughs> That's how we operate. Uh, you know, but just have fun. And, and again, find your voice. Find out what it is you're going to deliver to your fans in this environment. For the big takeaway for us, I think, and, and even just in general, it's about the eyeballs. You're, it's not really about the targeting. If you want stuff to be seen, this is a really interesting place. But again, remember those metrics that we saw. You know, and how, how can we beat that? It's not just a social network. This is an entertainment platform. And I cannot stress that enough. If you try to do some branding things in here, put a message in here, this is entertainment, pure entertainment. And last but not least, and this is the most important, if there's anything you take away from today, it is this. Nobody has the answers. And if someone tells you they do, they are absolutely lying to you. It is changing every single day. So it is up to all of us in this room to push the boundaries and shape the future of what this can be Snapchat themselves are super flexible. They're still figuring stuff out. They'll get on the phone with you if you don't know. And there's just, there's no wrong answer at this point. So go do it. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jessica. Can everybody hear me now? I got a new microphone. Okay, great. Um, thank you so much for that wonderful overview. I think it was really useful for all of us, especially because Snapchat is relatively new medium, and I think we're all still trying to figure it out. 